I Testify is about testifying of what Jesus Christ has done and can do in each of our lives. Through testimony of people just like you and through study of His Word, our prayer is to encourage each follower of Christ to be a light in this world. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5.16「Hi, welcome my Testify family to another episode, but also to another opportunity to see how God is shining His light through His children. Today I have with me a wonderful friend, that's why I'd love to introduce you, as first as a friend, Stephen Lee, but also he's a missionary entrepreneur and also a gospel worker in the Vineyard of the Lord. So uh, Stephen, please share how you began your walk, walk with the Lord, or actually even before you began that walk with the Lord. Where were you then? Yeah, um, I am super excited to be here. Um, thank you for having me. And I think it's an opportunity, a um, great opportunity for me to just share how God is able to bring you out of such dark places. Um, I began by living my life for one thing, and that one thing only was uh, Taekwondo, martial arts. And I was quite good at it um, to a point that I, I was competing in the national level and I had my full scholarship to, scholarship to UCLA, and I was gonna go into Olympics, and that was my goal, you know, the gold medal. And I was living my life for that 120% of, of every single day, exercising eight plus hours every single day. So that was my life, but it was when I lost what I thought was my life, my purpose, that I started going into depression. And it was a dark time for me. Uh, my mom just got remarried, and she, uh, both of them didn't want my career to be just Taekwondo because if you get hurt, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else is there? So because of that, they're like, okay, being a Korean, <laughs> um, you, why don't you study, go to Ivy Leagues and uh, become a doctor, lawyer? <laughs> yeah, so for me, that was really not my thing, even though I was pretty good at studying. So... I could, couldn't could I do ask it. you yes. also how your relationship with your mom yes. is? Yes. Um, or was it that Because point? she raised me as a single mother. Uh, being an immigrant, she put, poured everything into my life. So I knew how much she meant for me in my life. I knew how much I meant for her in her life. And she was everything to me in the sense of everything she said I do. Right. So that's why when she said, oh, n no on Taekwondo, right. it was a serious thing for you. It, it was. Um, my mom was a very strong woman, as in um, she wanted the best for me. And because she did not get what I, the opportunities I got in education and all these things, she wanted me to use that so that she could have, he, I could have an easier life. So when she said no to Taekwondo, I, I had to really think and, and stop, okay, my mom's caring for me, so let me listen to her. Being the obedient Asian child, uh, I said, okay, let me do it, but I did not know how much that would impact my life. So when, when that happened, um, I hit depression, I became suicidal, so I remember this one night, I went to the kitchen, and I only had one thing in my mind, opened the drawer, grabbed the biggest kitchen knife I could find, and I lifted up going to pierce my heart. Uh, I said, this is it. I don't, I don't really know what I'm living for. And I, I, I looked into like people's lives, as in like those famous people, those people who have money. And it seemed like their life was not great. You see so many people die, like they, they become overdosed in drugs, even in that high life that everyone else wants. And when I observed that, I was like, you know, I'm gonna go through this life, do things I don't wanna do, go through pain, and work hard just to get to that point and still not be satisfied. So what's the point? So let me just die and end this right now. I don't, I don't need life. And so when I did that, what stopped me was my mom. She wasn't there, but I had this, I don't know, imagination of her walking in to the door and seeing her child in a full of blood on the ground and just, that silence and not being able to say anything but just tears coming out of her eyes. 
And that image was what stopped me from actually stabbing myself. So that's how close I was with my mom. But now, because I didn't know what to live for, I, I kept searching. And I, I grew up Presbyterian uh, in, in my title as a name. I guess I, I just went to church because of two things, sadly, girls and basketball. I mean, that's, I'm being real. So because so of that. Regularly, you would actually attend church regularly. Yes, yeah, regularly. Okay. But it was for not for the right. Yeah, 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 girls and yeah, basketball. That's it. Okay. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But that's, I see that in so many young people's lives these days. So I was that kind of person. I didn't know God really existed. I would sing, read a Bible, but I didn't know. So when I hit rock bottom, I said, God, if you're real, show me because I don't want to live anymore. And it was one day in this English class, uh, I think I was about a junior in high school, in this English, English class, a group of people came in trying to raise funds for Ethiopia. And they were trying to build a well there. And they showed pictures of that country. And it was this particular picture of a little boy completely naked with flies all around him. And he was staring at the camera and you see his belly. And, and what that told me was there's this little kid who is born basically to die in several years or several months because there's no food, there's no shelter, there's nothing. And here I was. I had education, I had food on my table, I had a roof over my head, and yet <laughs> I want to kill myself because I can't do what I want. So that really hit me. And I believe that's when God spoke to me saying, Stephen, I want you to live for people like them. I want you to live for others who have that, who have no hope. And I have given you so much that you could use to help those people. And that completely changed my trajectory of my life. And so I said, I want to live for those people who need help, those people who need hope. And that's what started my journey in this mm. Christian walk. Event? How old yes. were you then when you saw that picture? In high I was school? in, um, I believe I was in uh, high, senior. Okay. Se I was a senior in high school. Okay. And, but then you come to a point of uh, being on fire for the Lord and then eventually uh, kind of sizzling out, hmm. right? So I was in that phase and I said, Lord, I see myself slipping uh, and I'm not sure what to do. So I said, Lord, help me. And he started to lead me in a direction I never thought I would go. I never even knew existed, which is the Adventist faith. Now, um, how that happened, I, I had a girlfriend at the time in high school, and her parents started to go to this church, an Adventist church. And I've never heard of Seventh-day Adventists before. So I asked my parents, who are these Seventh-day Adventists? And my dad did a quick search online, and then he got back to me after a day. He said, these people are a cult. Now, when a Korean, in a Korean person's mindset, a cult is like baby sacrifices, um, <laughs> arranged marriages, and, and, and doing crazy things in some room somewhere. So that's what a cult is in our mind. And so when he said that, I was like, oh, no, this is, this is not good. And my girlfriend's serious. parents are going to that church. Yeah. Mercy. So I said, okay, let me talk to my girlfriend. And I, I would talk to her on the phone. I said, whatever you do, do not follow your parents to that church. Because they're going to brainwash you and, and you know, do all these crazy things. And my girlfriend, <laughs> praise the Lord, that she didn't follow my advice. She followed her parents to the church, and then she started learning about what Seventh-day Adventist is and their, and their um, truth in the Bible and how biblically they are founded and all the prophecies and, and things like that. So eventually, we got into so many arguments um, because my faith was different, her faith was different, and she was saying, you know, all these ridiculous stuff that I have never heard of, like go to church on Saturday, what are you talking about? They did brainwash you. So it came to a point where we were arguing so much. I said, you know what? I have to see it for myself. What, what kind of craziness is going on in this church? 
So I decided to follow her one day, one Saturday. And, and of course, I'm, I'm expecting some crazy things. And yet, it, it seemed somewhat normal. Uh, <laughs> one thing was a little, got me weary is um, during Sabbath school, I, I know that now, but at the time I didn't know, the pastors were going to go into this room and we're going to study the Bible. And I felt weird, like, what do you mean do a Bible study before worship and in this small room where only certain people are going in there? Okay. But, you know, I, I just followed and we got into this room and he started opening up the Bible and he asked me one simple question. He said, Stephen, uh, do you know why we go to church on the Sabbath or Saturday? And in my mind, I said, Yes, you're a cult, <laughs> right? That, <that's laughs> uh, but um, I was expecting him to try to persuade me to believe in the Sabbath and, and that uh, he would kind of take Bible out of context and kind of try to change the words in there and, and do all this stuff. But all he did was simply go to Exodus 20. Like he... He just simply went to verses and read what was on the Bible. And when he did that, I said, this is not what this man says. This is what the Bible says. Hmm. And so that day I accepted the Sabbath. I said, wow. I want to, this is what it says, so I'm going to live it. Hmm. But then going back to my mom, um, they believe this church is a cult. And so... Now I believe in the Sabbath. I couldn't keep it in the beginning because of my parents. But then they saw changes in my life. Um, I'm learning more about the Bible. I'm learning about our Seventh-day Adventist truth and doctrines. And they would see certain changes in, and they thought it was a little weird for me. And, and I felt like, okay, I want to learn more about this. So maybe I could go to a Seventh-day Adventist school or university so I applied to some of them, and I thought I was going to go to that school. And my parents thought that was weird. Why are you picking these schools that they never heard of? But then in my mind, it's like, I want to learn more. But, it, but there was an opportunity for me to work for a ministry. And I think that's when so many things changed between my relationship with my mom, where because now there's this back of my mind, okay, maybe ministry, maybe ministry. But then I was like, no, I can't do that. What would my mom think? Mm. Not go to university. That's, that's crazy. As a, especially as a Korean child, uh, I grew up in Korea for 10 years. So I still have that cultural mindset of education is everything. And so for me to make that decision would have been, complete chaos in my family. So I said, you know what? That's not, that's not where God is leading me. I need to go to this school. <laughs> but uh, he kept impressing upon my mind to a point. He, he tried to reach out to me in different ways, but there was this one verse that I want to share. Hmm. And it was so real that I have to share this. It's in Matthew 19, verse 29. Matthew 19, yes. verse 29. And viewers, you can follow along with us in your Bibles as well. Matthew 19, 29. And what's interesting is I wasn't even looking at this verse. I was listening to a sermon, and he was talking about a verses before, I think Matthew 18. But my eyes landed on this verse, and it says, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Mm. And that really touched me. And I knew at that time what God was telling me. He said, Stephen, I have given you life and I want you to live for me. That means sometimes you have to make these choices where it's going to be lots of pain. And I said, Lord, with tears flowing down my eyes, I said, I have to do it. I have to do it. He, he's given me life. He has given me person. I have to live for him. 
And so I made a decision to go full-time ministry at the time. And there is so much more into that story where, of course, I have broken the heart of my mother. There are times that, I, that when I was leaving, um, my whole family didn't want to see me leave. So they left the home. Um, I was all alone at home the day before I was supposed to leave. And I re- literally thought I was never going to see him because Jesus is coming soon. I need to work for him. And, and this is it. And they, they threatened me to disown me. They, they threatened me with a bunch of pastors. They brought everyone they knew to convince me otherwise. But I said, God has told me this is where I need to walk. And I'm going to walk it. And I believe he would take care of the rest. So I made that decision that night. I wrote a letter. I cleaned the home. And because I, I thought I would never get to see him. And I, 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 I left uh, that day um, alone. But I wasn't really alone. Because God was walking with me. And so that really broke my relationship with my mom. And she has invested so much into our child. And because I knew that, I had a harder time letting go. But you see, I I lived a life of trying to be approved by my parents and people that I knew around me. Always. From high school, being an immigrant always is hard. Um, Someone who can't speak English well and people make fun of you. And I want to be accepted. I want to be just like everyone else. And so my uniqueness, my difference, I always want to put that to the side or hide it. But this was a great transition I believe God was making in my life where now I am weaning off from my parents, um, their expectations, and basically they don't live my life. So I had to make that decision to wean off from them and live a life not depending on my parents anymore, but depending on God and Him being my all in all. And he being my father. Yeah, I think it's a, a really vital question that actually a, a lot of people mm-hmm. have is, you know, when you compare the verse that you just read, Matthew nineteen twenty nine, to the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, then what does it mean to respect your parents right. mm-hmm. in a Christian way? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you you make a very good distinction here that it it doesn't always mean doing what they right. what they desire you to do if God is calling you to do something else. But it doesn't yeah. it doesn't also mean that you know disobey them. You, yeah. yeah, I mean it, it's it's certainly like a case by case, but there's a there's a fine distinction yes. here. I, and I, you bring up a very good point because. I'm not saying like we should all just, you know, go off on our own and mm-hmm. do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. I was so clear that God was leading me in this. Mm-hmm. And, and for them, they were thinking for me. I mean, mm-hmm. they weren't doing it for their own good. Mm-hmm. They had those expectations because they cared about my life. Mm-hmm. But God knows what is best and he knows the future. And why I say that is what happened afterwards. It's been now 10 years since I've been in full-time ministry and I've been on my own, and I kept my relationship with my mom. Mm-hmm. I thought it's going to be broken completely. But after all these years, we are closer than even before I, I did that. And only God knew what was going to happen. And in a different way, right? Yes. You're close in a, in a different way because living vicariously through your child and vice versa, you're living, you know, what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the kind of relationship that God wants us to have? It's true. Is, or is that just another idol? Right, right. And so what God was proving to me is in Matthew six thirty three, mm. and we use this a lot, mm-hmm. but it, it became so real after years. At the time, in the beginning, I did not see. I could not see at the end of the tunnel. It seemed all dark. But yet here... In Matthew 6, 33, it says, But seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Literally, God added my mother into my life after I've chosen God. Even my career, even how he sustained me financially, and the things that I do now, I love what I'm doing. 
-hmm. I get to travel the world. I get to do so many different projects. And God is using my talents in all that he can. So he exactly knew what was it going to be like in the future. But I didn't know at the time, so I was scared. Mm -hmm. But I just had to simply trust in what he said, where he's leading, knowing clearly what he's saying. And I said, okay, let me take the first step. He's got to make everything possible. And so with my relationship with my mom, before she thought I was the cult, you know, in a cult now I lost my son. He's, gonna, he's throwing his life away. It's a completely turnaround. She, she asked me for prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's a sense of if Stephen play, prays, things happen. Like that's a complete change. And, and now she, um, she looks so highly of Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm. And that's not my doing, really. That's God. But she saw the changes and the consistency. And one thing she said the other day, she said, and I didn't even know this, that was going on in her mind. She said, through Stephen, because she sees church members, but these church members at church, they're, they're good. But when they go out, they're just like anyone else. But when I saw Stephen, how consistent he was with this life with God and how changed he became the changes he get, went through as a Christian. And I could see the purity, just like Jesus. And because I saw that, it gave me hope. And I wanted to change my life. I have never heard that from my mom. She's a very strong businesswoman. And so coming that from her, I was like, Lord. I mean, we're not all the way there yet. I want her to be... Uh, knowing the truth that I know to give her hope. But it's a, to me, that was amazing. And only God can do it as we walk in his footsteps. Amen. To me, yeah. that's like the miracle of miracles. Right. Family members to bring others, to, to yeah. bring their own family members to Christ. Yeah. Because I know so often we want to go out and meet strangers and convert them, but yeah, I think we have a bigger responsibility for the people that we know, the people mm -hmm. that are closest to us. Um, they know us the best. And, you know, Jesus mentioned it before, like in his own hometown, he couldn't mm. even speak to the people there and minister to them because they knew him so well. Mm -hmm. But it just shows you that, you know, sometimes that's in God's plan for us. So I like, that's awesome. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Far cry from, a, from the cult opinion. Yes. That's <laughs> I mean. Right. And, and no matter what we say to people, Yes, it may help them and maybe convert them, but I think it is the life we live mm. that truly converts people. And when they see that consistency and how you live your life and through all the crazy chaos and obstacles and problems of life, even depression and, and these things, if they see how they could have hope in Christ and that they're, somehow this person is able to go through the, these problems that seems insurmountable, but yet somehow this person is still going. It is then that they are able to say, this must be not him. This can't be of a human power, but it is only of a divine who can do all things. Mm. And I, 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 that's the, I think the model that I want to live by in the things that I do, that people can see through me that it's not Stephen, it's not some Korean, it's not someone who has all these talents and these things, but truly what because the things that he does is amazing, that they could only be directed to the power of God because he does it through him. Mm -hmm. yes. it, it's a similar concept to Abraham and Isaac, mm -hmm. isn't it? Just, mm -hmm. just the sense that Abraham was willing to let Isaac go mm -hmm. just because God said to, even though God had the full plan mm -hmm. and it was this test of faith it yes, said are you word. yeah faith. are are you willing to follow me mm -hmm. it's very true and i want to encourage the viewers and when we just simply trust god in that first step it could change your whole life that that knowing your purpose and what he has for you in your life and you don't know what's going to happen but Simply saying, Father, I don't see it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be so hard. I thought I was going to lose my family for the rest of my life. But yet, just saying, Father, you know the future. You care about me so much. 
You care about my family so much. And so I leave it to your hands because I believe this is a decision you're telling me to make. Yeah. And when I make that decision, he's going to take you on a wild journey um, to not only develop your character, but also developing his love, um, the experience that you could have with him and how it could change other people's lives as well. So I want to encourage the viewers in that if God is telling you to do something, he already knows what's going to happen. And he will provide everything that you need, everything your family needs, everything your friends need, even your career, your, your future. He will provide. And all we need to do is just take that first step forward. Kind of sounds like you're motivating us. <laughs> uh, that kind of similar to something you do now yeah i guess so <laughs> i think it comes naturally now like i said um god said to give hope and so i take in my ministry into just helping more people to realize we can have hope in our life with all the chaos that's happening in the world mm-hmm. so um, interestingly enough i just went to ethiopia yeah. um, after all these years right uh and i was able to speak and to help so many people, hundreds of people with um, health expos and also speaking at many different churches and training young people to live a life to their fullest. And so what I, what I do now is more so um, coaching uh, people to find that direction, um, to cl- have a clear calling for your life from all the other voices around mm-hmm. you and coming out of the daily routines of just living to survive but live with a purpose because God has called us to be the royalty of the world. Mm. So that's something I do and also different projects with um, business and ministry together and helping uh, making an impact in different communities throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm just very grateful that I get to be part of something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. That's cool. (laughs) I I wanted to add another verse. Okay, Um, great. it's, It's another... A uh, common verse that we know very well. It's Isaiah 55, 11. And I think it speaks to that purpose and that um, mm. claiming that promise, uh, which says, uh, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, mm. but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that Amazing. definitely reminded me of the kinds of promises that God has claimed uh, for you and that you've claimed from his word. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so um, just kind of along the lines of that, I know that you have actually a website that people can go and look at. Um, can you tell us what the website is? Yes, it's called my name, Stefan, mm-hmm. with a P-H-E, S-J-Lee.com. Okay. And so we can go there to get more help if, if we need or, yeah, or ideas. Yes, uh, one-on-one coaching or group and Bible studies and things like that. So you can contact me through there. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And for all of you at home, you can support us um, by prayer, by donations, and go to LLBN.TV. Thank you. <laughs>